Hello everyone and welcome back to a Gran Turismo time trial guide where, as you can see in the background, we're racing something very futuristic. Yes, it's the McLaren Ultimate Vision Gran Turismo car. We're at Suzuka, if you haven't already guessed, in the background. Racing soft tyres. This is hard, this one. Very hard, in fact. This car can be unstable at high speeds and understeer at low speeds. Gold estimate, I've put a 139.8. That's the time I believe you need to at least get to get gold. I think that time of rank one is going to come down drastically uh, throughout these next two weeks. If you do enjoy this video, do give it a like, do subscribe to the channel, stay in touch with all the latest content, of course. But without further ado, let's get into the lap then. I'll show you the guide, a pad lap, and a chase camera as well. You can check out those timestamps down below. In towards turn one then, you do not need DRS. I just want to put that out there right now. You do not need to use DRS. So don't worry about DRS. Just focus on your lap here. Now, as you're going towards turn one, the 100 board is a safe brake marker. It's one I would use. You can try and brake at the orange painted fence there, a bit in the distance where the escape road is, but there's a chance the car will just snap over steer and spin out. So just be careful of that. The 100 board is safe and sound. Coming into here, I'm dropping the gears. I go up to fourth gear, short shift early. That just creates a bit more stability on exits instead of getting power over steer. Into these S's, it's all about bouncing the car in third gear. So accelerating, a dab of the brake as you go into the corner, accelerates. But when you come to this one in particular, on the right hand side, the start of the curve there, a really good marker. This is the slowest of all the S's here in sector one. And this is one you really need to get right to really set up sector two. So I'm a bit further left than normal here. So I'm actually getting a better line than normal as well. But you want to try and maintain as much speed as possible. Usually around 90 miles an hour in this car. I drop a bit more there as I continue up here. I short shift to fourth gear and clip the curb. If I clip the curb, I can accelerate out the corner and I shouldn't understeer off there. Stay in fifth gear as you head towards Degna 1. And on the right hand side there, you've got that lamppost, okay? That is your brake marker for Degna 1. Don't go to sixth gear. Stay in fifth gear. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to hit the brakes and you're going to try and do 130 miles an hour through Degna 1. You can really abuse the curb here as well. The downforce really plants the car as it goes through here. There we go. 130 miles an hour kept there. On the left hand side, you have the Marshall tent. That is your next brake mark. You see, I'm braking just before that gets to the edge of my screen. And I can see it in my peripheral vision. I know it's going to be very hard for some of you because you're on massive screen but you need peripheral vision for this one to really get the brake markers nice and nailed here. So I stay in third gear for this one. I go through the corner. I accelerate as quick as possible on the exit in third gear. It should be stable enough as we continue towards the hairpin. Now we've picked up such speed due to the hybrid system here. You have to brake extremely early. So that lamppost in the middle of the curb here on the right hand side, that is your brake marker for this corner. And you're going to want to drop to first gear initially for this. Now you can see it quite clearly there on chase cam. So chase cam gets a better vantage point in terms of this one as I go into here. So I went to first gear i'm up to third gear for the exit and that creates a lot of stability i will explain that a bit more in the pad lap because there's a lot more information in there that i need to tell you about as well we accelerate out of that corner then we're gonna head towards spoon once again we've got such speed here that we are gonna have to break really early and we're looking for that 100 board it's just after the 100 board we're gonna break here in terms of on a wheel uh, and that's what i'm gonna do okay now for spoon you're gonna start to understeer as you start to slow the car down because of course the downforce doesn't work as well as at higher speed. So as you come down the speed here, it's going to start to understeer out. So you really want to brake early here for the second part of Spoon. I short shift to fourth gear again for stability on exit. Highly recommend you do that as we continue on out there. Now, if you are using DRS, you need to straighten the wheel up for it to like use itself. So really straighten up the wheel, then hit it, straighten up the wheel. Now, 130R, this is a big corner. Do not try and do this flat. It will spin out. You want a little bit of power on. You want to just be below 200 miles an hour and the car should stay stable, okay? So you are going to either want to lift off here at the 100 board or brake and hope that you slow down enough as you go through it here. So watch here as I put a little bit of speed on there to avoid the car losing out. Now on a pad, it's actually quite easier to do 130R. As we come towards the chicane then, on the left-hand side, you've got the 150 board. I was using the tarmac on the right as my brake marker because it's a right-hander. So you can see those markers there. You can see them even better on chase cam for you as we come into the braking zone there. 200 miles and hours of coming to here. Now, it's a bit clunky through here because the downforce is not working at this moment in time. And as we accelerate out of here, be careful, power O stick can definitely happen. A short shift to fourth gear there. We're going to head towards the line, and that's a 37.9. The next lap on this one, actually, that I'm not going to show you, I was actually on for a 137.6, which is insane. We go to a pad lap then. As I come into here, okay, the pad is not too bad in this first corner. Now, if you're on automatic, you're going to really struggle on this one. I will be honest with you. You can see that I'm using the same gears as I come into here. And this is where the pad struggles. I can't get the steering lock the same as the wheel as I go through here. So I'm having to turn earlier. I'm having to slow the car down that little bit more to, in order to get through this sector. But what I'm showing you here, 
does mean it's possible. 28-5 there. 28-1 is definitely possible as you come through here. Again, short shift into fourth on that left-hander as we head towards Degno. And when the downforce starts coming to play, it becomes easier to drive here. At 120 on a pad, not 130 as we come into this right-hander. Again, same gearage there as we continue on out of there. On automatic, this car struggles like crazy. It really does. Uh, coming into the hairpin, I could get it turned in, but I had to really slow the car down. You can see that there. I'm racing my own ghost there of YouTube Tishney versus the Tishney account that I've got here as I continue on out of there. So again, automatic, you're going to struggle on the hairpin. You're going to struggle in lots of places. Now, a 139.8 is possible on a pad on automatic. It's very hard to do, though. I went to manual, and I could quickly pick up the pace quite quickly as I continue on out here. You see that oversteer there kicking in. Oversteer, easier to catch, of course, on a pad. And you notice I'm also not using DRS at all. This shows you a non-DRS lap can get you gold as well as we go into 130R. Dab the brakes there. And I can actually maintain a high speed on the pad, so it's actually easier on the pad to do 130R. It's not easier, though, to do the chicane. This chicane was diabolical on the pad. I struggled, like, massively amount there. I was trying to turn earlier and earlier to nail the lap. Even so, uh, this is a 139.6. This should remain as a gold time on the pad. And that is that done, then. Let's go to Chase Cam, then, as we head towards turn number one. Let's have a look at this lap again. So we're coming into third gear. We're going to go up to fourth gear, then, on exit. We will get a little bit of oversteer, but nothing major. Very catchable as we go into the S's. Now, you don't want to abuse the curbs too much, but you do want to touch them here. And it's all about accelerating, then brake. Then accelerate, and then a big brake in at the start of the curb there. Now, I keep a nice tight line here. Highly recommend you do that. As we continue on here, we're going to short shift to fourth gear, clip the curb, and then accelerate out. And you should benefit there from no understeer, or very little, and not run out wide. The lamp post on the right there for Degna 1, 130 miles an hour. The marginal tent there for Degna 2, staying in third gear as we accelerate out the corner. Be aggressive on the throttle there in third gear. You should be fine as we continue towards the hairpin. The lamp post in the middle of the curb there on the right-hand side, dropping to first gear, back up to third gear, though, so we can accelerate out the corner, absolutely stable. Now, when I did this in automatic on the pad, it dropped to first gear, which meant you had all sorts of power oversteer on the hairpin. Cost so much time, it really did. Which is why, if you're on a pad, you need to go to manual for this one. You really do. As we head up here, then, using the 100 board just after it there. As we come into here, you're starting to see that understeer come into play up to fourth gear, then, as we start to accelerate out of this corner. Again, trying to avoid that understeer. It starts to pick up. We go straight here on the wheel, DRS. We straighten up again. There we go, DRS. And as we head to 130R, just be careful. So I lift here and then literally on the throttle there, trying to maintain 200 miles an hour. Anything above that, you're really going to struggle, except on a pad, which can go a bit quicker. Into the Casio track. Angle, you can cut this a lot. You can do that, but be careful, power oversteer on the exit there. And we head towards the line, and that is that lap done. That's going to be it, though, for this time trial, folks. I do hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, the, the pad, it is possible to get gold. This is why I do the pad lap. It's why the video is slightly later now, because I've got to do a pad lap, of course. And it did. I did practice on automatic, and it wasn't really working out worthwhile, was it, really? But I'd say that is going to be it for this video. If you did like it, do give it a like. Subscribe to the channel, stay in touch with all the latest content, pad and wheel times, put into this video now. Two videos there to check out. Two companies that help the channel out as well. I get kicked back when you use either the Fanatec link or the GT Amiga use code there. A big thank you for watching, as always, and I hope to see you in another video or live stream again very soon.